take a look at uh, one of the aquariums in the fish basement gallery that at least for me hasn't gotten the love over the last year um, I got this tank December of last year uh, 2019 this is December of 2020 so it's one year old I had an idea for the scape and I, I you know I got it set up and at first it looked good but then as time went by I was having water flow detritus issues and then ultimately I decided that the scape I had was just too limiting for this size it's a 220 gallon aquarium but I have some big rocks in here, as you'll see, and it just, uh, it wasn't giving me all the swimming space that I really wanted for the fish. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to fix that. So let me, let me show you what we have right now. So, so here's the tank. I mean, right off the bat, you can tell that this was kind of my, uh, you know, sort of forgotten aquarium, because right, right when I got this, I was in the process of finishing the 3,000 gallons. So, as you can imagine, that was pretty all-consuming. Um, you know, I overestimated my time and energy, and I thought, oh, I can do both at the same time. But the uh, 220 got a little bit of neglect, not in terms of water quality or feeding the fish or anything like that, but just in terms of massaging the aquascape uh, to getting it to what I wanted to be. Um, I mean, kind of the, the best example I can give is, is look at the lighting. So you have two Kessel 90s over here. You have... Uh, 360 Tuna Sun WE here, and then on the left you have a 360 uh, X Tuna Sun. So, you know, I'm getting the same spectrum, but just a hodgepodge of lights that I had from other tanks. Um, initially, I did not have enough light on here. I transferred over a lot of materials from other aquariums, so it had a, a, a kind of a funky cycle. Like, you know, the no ammonia or anything like that, but um, just lots of transfers of other fi fish from other tanks uh, could have been arranged in here. Uh, transfer plants. The, the plants have never done nearly as good as, say, the 125 over there, which has arguably not as high power lighting as this does. They get the same fertilizers, the same water, and all that. But uh, I think I've just always been behind the gun on the 220. Uh, just to give you the, the whole spiel here the it's a uh, hopefully you can see what lighting's not too good there but it is a very large sump a four foot long sump packed full of ceramic material mechanical and biological so it's it has excellent filtration and it has additional water flow with the uh the gyre pump there so in terms of that equipment is good and everything i think all it's lacking is is a little bit of uh direct attention for me to fix some of the problems so so let me, let me show you what the problems were. Originally, the scape was actually chunkier than it is now. I sort of cleared up this right side over here and created, sort of brought it up a little more and uh, created more space around it and through it, um, which might be better visualized from over on the side. So the 220 is a two foot tank front to back, so it's pretty good to work with, but if you look at when you put in big rocks like these, you know, they, they do take up a lot of space, so you have to kind of pay attention. As you can see down here, I get a lot of uh, a lot of mulm, a lot of detritus buildup. Um, probably not the right amount of water flow that I really need to have through there, even though I have a lot of water movement, you know. So the middle part was always kind of a channel between this thick scape. That part I've always liked uh, through here. It needs a little tweaking. I've sort of messed it up over here as I was trying to do some work further up. And then the root and under here is a big cave that's made from slate across the rock and I've hidden it to, so you don't see the slate. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with this piece that slid down because it actually was not there originally. But then we get over to the, uh, so, so the middle part of the aquarium, I think I can make that work. There is actually a good size space back there. I don't have built up there, all the fish, including you know, big boys like Geophagus, uh, Acara, Angels, and even I think the Severum is, yes, there's a Severum down in the cave. Those are decent sized fish. They have no problem going through there whatsoever. Really all the way up, there's plenty of space. Then we get to the left side of the tank. This is where my idea and reality didn't really work out. So the thought was, originally I didn't have all that wood up there. That's something where 
I move that up there uh, just as an attempt at a uh, a partial rescape. Again, obviously not liking it, but had to go somewhere, so I went there. But originally it wasn't like that, and the the, the rock work is built up here, and behind it. I've actually built up the substrate. So in the back there is actually uh, black lava rock capped with uh, fluval stratum and then some other rocks, just because the fluval stratum is so light, just to sort of give something, uh, give it a little more weight, a little more for the plants. And I actually had um, planted plants back there. I actually had uh, planted plants there. And on the right, I had, I had a pot back there and I had a large, uh, swords planted there and on the on the left and it it, it just didn't really it was as big as a 220 is it was my what i put in there was too big for this it took up too much room they never really took off quite right didn't give me enough room for the other plants and the building up of the wood so i switched to the java fern so that i can attach it to the wood um and then uh, i also switched the ground cover i originally had some uh some dwarf valicinaria and uh, some uh, uh, anubius, but uh, I think because of the not because of the lighting, but because of the way the scape is shaped, they just weren't getting what they needed down there in terms of lighting. And I didn't want to bring them out front because I didn't really have a, a whole lot of space to play with out front for the fish. So that I did end up getting these banana plants. And despite being moved around a little bit, like I didn't put this over here, uh, the fish helped me with that, but uh, they are doing good <clears throat> in terms of their growth. So I think I can work with that. And I think I can just move the Anubias farther up and intermix it with the Java Fern, kind of like that. And I think that'll bring that back. So what is it I need to do right now? So this is the plan. I wanna keep the center, that's doing the best. I wanna clean up the right, see if I can't tweak that a little bit. I definitely want to clean up and tweak all the plants along the bottom, get that worked out better. And as well, this in the front here, this needs to be tweaked, moved back where it used to be. But then over here on the left side of the tank. So I am going to bring the water level down. I'm going to suck out all that uh, substrate that I piled up back there. And there's actually a big rock going that way that's holding it in in the backside. I'm going to get all that cleaned out. I'm going to take all this down to here since that's supporting that side of the cave and then from here I'm going to build that up. Um, I'm going to try to make it in the back and the front so that there's still plenty of room and then I'm going to create a big space of room over here and then once once that's cleaned out, once the rocks are restructured to give me something that's kind of going up and back but still having room behind it, um, then I'll, I'll take the, the wood and the plants and get them integrated back into the rock work and then take the smaller rocks and then use them to fill in to give it a more natural look until the plants really grow in. Because the thought process is that if I get the wood, the spider wood embedded into the rock, you know, you have the rock sitting on a little branch of the spider wood and then you get it covered in plants. Once it all grows in with the roots hanging down, you get a really cool look. Um, but that requires the plants to grow in for that to happen. So. Uh, see if I can't uh, get this fixed up and and get it going okay oh man that is a pain getting on a ladder and getting up inside the 220 and moving big rocks that are covered in bacteria and nice and slippery while still having all the fish cruising around so they're not happy but I think they're gonna appreciate their new scape uh, I know it's hard to see right now with the water all murky, but I just wanted to show sort of the, the in-between of this process. So the plants along the bottom are cleaned up, um, created more openings in the scape. And again, once the plants grow more heavily onto the wood, it should look a little more natural. Uh, the same over here in the middle. I'm still keeping the two-thirds, one-third sort of scape. And there is still the big cave under here, which you can't see, but uh, now, this whole left side, which was just full back there, was, you know, was built up so you couldn't swim through. Now it's much more opened up and you can come around the side, all the way around the back, nice and open in the back. Taller, uh, I'm using the wood coming down to sort of lean the structure up onto. Again, something where when the, uh, uh, the plants are grown in, 
you're gonna it's gonna look a, a lot nicer a lot more natural and there is some smaller rocks propped up under some of the big ones to create small caves and things that these smaller fish can go through and then in the front there's just a few rocks that are I'll, I'll have to fit them back into the scape once uh, the water clears up I can't see well enough down there to know where they need to go and um, since I turned up you know a fair amount of substrate there I tried to do my best to scoop it out while I was still draining to in case there was any built up uh, toxic organics like if you get any sort of uh, gas build up down there uh, to get that out of there uh, so what I want to do is go ahead and get it start filling back up because it does take quite a while since I'm filling it up with the python uh, which is the I'll match up the water with their water um, versus be faster with the hose but that water would be cold so it takes a little bit but uh, as it clears up I will uh, fit the, the, the leftover rocks and quite honestly there could be something I missed in the middle there it could be a plant it could be a piece of wood sitting down there um, so once it clears up some I'll uh, fix that stuff up and then once it's really clear I'll go ahead and get a nice in-depth video of the scape uh, and so you can see the results. All right, a quick look at the uh, refill process. We're more than <clears throat> halfway refilled. And as I expected, there are a few rocks over here that I couldn't see and uh, they're gonna have to find a new home. And there's a little bit of uh, either, eh, that kind of looks like mulm build up from the back where I clear all those rocks. Uh, but no problem there. The filter will get that taken right out. And looking at the front over here, I don't know, this may be a little more, like the rock work here may need some more small pieces of this uh, spotter wood uh, kind of embedded in the cracks and sticking down to give it a little more natural look. Because right, right now we have, you know, the plants are starting, you know, only halfway up. So that's going to look pretty rocky. Um, there is a cave there, as you can see, the severum is in there so and there's some wood there that's it's really hard to see right now but uh <clears throat> so it might look okay uh we'll see uh, i can adjust it uh once the water's cleared up but you can see if i go back here you have you know the big build up here and it goes back so the fish can swim behind and under and the same thing here and then you're down in the middle and you have an elevated hardscape and wood and plants so hopefully what's going to happen is when these all grow out and these all grow out you'll, you'll still have a good size opening in the middle not as big as this one here the main one which has you know substantial <clears throat> hardscape and woodscape that goes back at each side kind of rounds it off and has the the plantings to sort of frame that out and then of course we have the opening on the right and now we have a sizable opening on the left so that hopefully that's gonna both change the water flow to get it what was happening before is it was coming across, kind of coming down, it was heavily obstructed there, so it was just all flowing back here. So there's a little more current here than I wanted, but I had to have it up as much as it was to cover all the back part of the aquarium to give there enough current. So now that it can go fully behind all that and through there, and then all the way back as well as the front, hopefully what that's gonna do is even that out and give me proper flow both in the front and the back and keep that uh, the, so much of the uh, buildup of organics back there. This tank's always been a little high in the nitrate for the, <clears throat> for the setup. Not, not too bad, but it was never as, as good as the, the 125 planted over there. It, it never got dialed in like that. So hopefully this will be the fix uh, as well as I need to get the the job of firming the Nubius to finally take off. So we'll hope, hopefully uh, they're all kind of elevated. Even though they're lower light plants, uh, they will take advantage of the extra light. So it, it can only help. Okay, <clears throat> the next one will be when it's completely filled up and uh, clear and we'll take a look and see what we end up with. So this is the after effects of uh, removing the, the big built up area in the back left corner you can still see a little bit of the uh, the mixed substrate in there but as you can see now it's clear the fish can swim all the way around the water current is actually coming across and going down both behind and in front so you, I don't know if you can see the current on video but it's it's nice and mild now it's it's steady it's everywhere it's moving 
uh, the water past all the plants is giving current for the fish, but it's uh, being split in half now. It's, it's much more indirect current, which is uh, what I was looking for. One thing you might notice, it's still a little cloudy. It's been 24 hours uh, since I did the change on the tank. And you can see the silt is kind of all over everything, the plants. Um, you can see here on this Anubius and the rock, of course, and even on the wood. But it's, uh, it's slowly getting worked out. <clears throat> uh, area like in the middle here where there's more flow, the silt's been moved off of that plant pretty good. And you can see that there is some you know, multiple pathways through even a large structure. Um, there's some smaller rocks underneath the bigger rocks, so it creates some caves through there. And then there's still the big, large cave in the middle, and there's a big open area in the back. So behind this buildup here in the back, it's pretty wide open. And now you're gonna have, uh, <clears throat> as I get more plants, we're gonna plant this all the way up, or as these grow in. Um, obviously these will grow, but I also wanna add a few more as well. So the same thing here, we're gonna have really heavily planted areas all the way up and over here as well, then with big gaps in between. Uh, another thing is to make it look a little more realistic over here, I need to get a little more spider wood and, and break off some pizzas and wedge it in some of these cracks in the rock and everything. Um, kind of like, kind of more like over here where there's more of a, a balance of the rock and the spider wood. Uh, in terms of the extra rocks that were in the front, uh, sometimes less is more, and I actually took those out. So this is actually all the, uh, the black um, lava rock in there is what was the buildup area. There's also some gravel, and then those rocks on top were just <clears throat> essentially extra rocks with the, the scape on the left being shortened up a little bit and sort of moving the larger rocks up. I uh, really just didn't really see a place to, to stick those rocks in there. I think the areas that look a little stacked, a little unnatural, I'm going to try to use the uh, the root, the wood root, to uh, jam in there and make it look more, more realistic. Sort of like over here, you see the, the rock, but then you have the wood root coming down off of it, giving it a little more of a natural feel, I think. And then also on the substrate, assuming these banana plants continue to do well, I think I will extend the coverage on those and you know get some more really all around the, the perimeter, soften up the, the hardscape on the bottom. And, and then really once the the top part is well planted, that should soften up that quite a bit. But uh, the fish are loving it. Uh, definitely the geophagus, they've got a, a new route they like to swim as a group. Um, they think they're getting fed now, so everyone's sort of spreading out looking for the food. But uh, everyone's doing great. Uh, like I said the geos, electric blue acara, looking great. Love those fish. Super red severum. Uh, and the geophagus, they're redhead tapajos. And then there's a uh, sort of a bluish silver angelfish pair. Uh, they definitely got really excited when I uh, changed out all that water. I, you know, the temperature uh, was a little different coming back in, and it definitely sparked them. Last night they were exhibiting all kinds of. Uh, breeding behavior, but the, they've chilled out today. And then the other fish, the Colombian Tetra, they're doing great. Uh, I think they appreciate the additional swimming room. Uh, they're pretty pretty good swimmers. Uh, the Corydora have been act active uh, just with all the the turn up on the substrate. You know, they've been uh, rifling through everything, looking for any, uh, any morsels. And then pretty much the smaller Tetra, <clears throat> they're just doing what they always do. Um, just sort of schooling around looking for tidbits to eat. But so this is escape for now. Uh, we're going to be adding a little bit more wood, a little bit more plants, and then I want to get the final group of fish for this tank. This is uh, not the, the full um, complement of fish that I intended for this aquarium. Uh, this is going to have a lot more uh, smaller to medium fish to mix in. Well, really. When I say small, small, like really small and small, not, uh, just big enough to not be food for the Akara, the Severum, and the Angels, but smaller than these uh, Colombian Tetra here. So more like something like Serpe Tetras or Rummy Nose or, or things of that nature. So to, to really fill in and complement some of these larger uh, semi-peaceful, you know, cichlids that are here. 
as well as um, some more geophagus or possibly some auto sinkless. Um, I need, I, I, there are actually, you know, a few plecos in here, three, but with all this, uh, there's kind of one in the back, a uh, super red bushy nose. But uh, they're really, you see them few and far between because there's just so much hardscape, so much cover that uh, it, plus I think there's plenty to eat in here for them. It is a, you know, one year established aquarium, so there's quite a bit of a um, <clears throat> biofilm that's built up on the, on the rocks and the wood. So that's why I'm thinking auto sinkless uh, because they're smaller and they'll be good for keeping these leaves clean. Um, but the main thing for this tank is uh, really, I think the only thing I need to focus on is the plants. Uh, they just have, they have a lot of light in this tank. They have good lighting, quality lighting, and they've never taken off. <laughs> so they uh, really don't do that well. So I think I'm gonna have to, you know, do some water tests, um, do some, uh, some investigation see what's going on see what the what the problem is I, I've grown these are easy plants to grow and I've grown them many times before with uh, much less lighting uh, much less quality lighting you know the whole nine yards so and I don't see any fish picking on them or anything like that so uh, see if I can figure out uh, what I'm doing wrong and uh, get these guys to take off because I think this tank will really pop once the uh, the plants kick in uh, really soften up this hardscape and provide a, a lot of uh, intricate little caves. There's a lot of area, you know, down in here for smaller fish to get in and out of there. And I like the contrast with the little fish darting in and out and then some of these larger fish like the severum and the geophagus. Um, and then the uh, medium fish like the Columbia Tetra, sort of the larger school. All right. So that's it for this tank, for the 220 for now, but uh, the next time you see this tank, hopefully I have uh, some really nice mature plant growth, uh, softened up the scape a little bit, and added a little more root in, the, in, in between the crevices on the rock to create a little more of a, a natural look. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, if you like this content and you wanna keep up with new videos that are coming out, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I have a build series coming on the 3,000 gallon DIY aquarium that you see behind me. Uh, so if you're interested in how I built that, uh, I got a series of videos that takes it all the way from nothing to what you see now. And uh, special thanks to all the Aquarium Domain Patreon uh, members. Your support really helps, uh, definitely allows me to do bigger, better projects in the fish basement and uh, keeps new content coming. So thanks to all of you.